Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I'm an AWS Solutions Architect, and welcome to this video in the .NET Learning Series. Did you know that you can create your own custom events in the AWS Cloud? There are a few different ways to accomplish this, such as sending a message to a simple notification service topic or SNS topic. Another option is to send your event data to the Amazon CloudWatch Events service. By default, many other AWS services send key notifications to CloudWatch events. But what if you wanted to create your own custom event notification? I have good news, you can. As an example scenario, let's say that you were taking a local backup of some important files on an EC2 instance. Once the backup is completed, your local script uploads the backup archive to an Amazon S3 bucket. Next, you want to trim your oldest backups to save on storage costs by using a short running and cost-effective Lambda function. But how does that Lambda function know when your backup and upload process has completed on your EC2 instance? That's where CloudWatch Events comes into play. CloudWatch Events enables you to trigger one or more targets across a wide variety of other AWS Cloud services. These targets can include services like AWS Step Functions, an SNS topic, Systems Manager Run Command, and yes, even an AWS Lambda function. In the rest of this video, we'll explore how you can send your own custom application events to the Amazon CloudWatch service using the AWS Tools for PowerShell. Once you've installed the AWS Tools for PowerShell, also simply known as the AWS PowerShell module, you'll set up your credentials file and you'll be ready to go. We've covered this setup process in a separate video, so if you're brand new to AWS or new to PowerShell, be sure to check it out before moving on. Before we go any further, let's start out by exploring the AWS PowerShell commands that allow you to interact with CloudWatch Events APIs. To do this, we use the get AWS commandlet name command to ask for a list of commands by AWS service name. So we'll switch over to our shell here and call get AWS commandlet name dash service events. You don't need to know the exact service name or type it out in full. Instead, just type part of the unique service name, such as events, to perform a pattern-based match. In response, you'll see a list of roughly a dozen PowerShell commands that perform various actions against the CloudWatch events service. Take special note of the write CWE event command. This is the command that we'll be using to write our custom events to CloudWatch. Now that we know the PowerShell command that we want to call, how do we know which parameters to pass to this command? That's where the PowerShell's built-in help system comes to the rescue. We'll call the get help command to learn the command's signature so that we know how to call it correctly. So switching back over to our shell, we'll call the get help dash name write CWE event command. As you'll notice from the built-in documentation, this command accepts a single parameter called dash entry. However, if you look at the data type that the dash entry parameter expects, you'll notice that it's a .NET object type that resides in the amazon.cloudwatch.model.net namespace. In order to call this command successfully, we first need to construct an instance of the putEventsRequestEntry.NET class, set a few properties on it, and then pass it into the command invocation. There are a couple of ways to instantiate a .NET object in PowerShell. First, you can use the traditional new object command with the type name parameter. Alternatively, PowerShell 5.0 introduced the static new method to call a class's constructor. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So we'll switch over to our shell and look at the amazon.cloudwatchevents.model.putEventsRequestEntry class, and then we'll look at the new method on it. If you reference a constructor or method without the parentheses, PowerShell will return a list of the overloads for that method. In this case, there's only a single parameterless default constructor, so let's go ahead and use that. Now we'll actually call the constructor and assign the new object instance to a variable named myEvent. So switching back to the shell here, we'll create a variable called myEvent and set it equal to a new instance of the put events request entry class. Great, so now we've got a new object. So what do we do now? Well, we need to set some properties on this object before we can pass it into the write CWE event command. 
How do you know which properties to set? A great starting place is to pipe the object into the getMember PowerShell command. The getMember command performs type reflection over the objects passed into it, and it will show you the properties and methods on that object. You should also examine the Amazon CloudWatch documentation for the Put Events API as the authoritative source to determine what input the service expects. So let's go ahead and take a look at the getMember command. First, you'll need to set the time property for the event. This represents the point in time that the event took place. To do that, we reference the myEvent variable containing the event object. Then we specify the time property and set that equal to the output of getDate, which simply returns the current date and time. Next, you can optionally add one or more affected AWS Cloud resources to a string collection. Setting the resources property is not mandatory, but it helps correlate application events to specific resources inside of your AWS account. If you do add any strings to this property, they must be valid Amazon resource names, or ARNs. You can also set this detail property to a valid JSON string. This property provides context for the event so that the event receiver knows what's happening. So let's go ahead and switch to the shell here. And we'll grab the detail property and set that to a PowerShell hash table. And then pipe that into the built-in convert to JSON command. So if we do myEvent.detail, you can see that we have a valid JSON string. You'll also need to set the source property, indicating where the event was triggered from. You can simply set the source property to a string like PowerShell, or perhaps more usefully, the PowerShell run space instance ID, which uniquely represents a PowerShell instance. This is more useful if you're trying to debug a program using log files containing that PowerShell run space ID. So let's go ahead and set that source property now. So we'll do myEvent.source equals host.runspace.instanceID. GUID. And if we take a look at the source property, you'll see that we have the run space ID. The last property you need to set is the detail type property, which is a custom field that specifies the type of event that occurred. So we'll go ahead and set my event dot detail type equal to something happened. With the my event object fully configured, you're finally ready to call the right CWE event command. Simply call the right CWE event command, specifying the dash entry parameter, and then pass in your myEvent variable. In order to consume events sent by your custom PowerShell application, you'll need to configure a CloudWatch event rule. That is a topic for a different video, however. So let's go ahead and run right CWE event, specify dash entry, and then pass in myEvent. As you can see, we get back a populated entry, which indicates that the command ran successfully. I hope you enjoyed learning about sending custom events to Amazon CloudWatch from PowerShell. Keep an eye out for future videos related to PowerShell development on AWS. Thank you.